Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. In this session, we will talk about of the analysis of the ABI. Let's see how can we can extract, uh, analyze, and uh, build a full representation of the ABIs. Please, if you have you have questions, interrupting me. But uh, can you please speak slow because my English is not really best. The best. <coughs> Okay, let's start. Uh -huh. The agenda for this session, I briefly talk about of the ABI concepts, uh, what is LIFABIGAIL, what implementation for the CTF debug format was done in LIFABIGAIL, that it's an alternative for the dwarf format. Dwarf format is the currently default format used for the LIFABIGAIL to extract the ABIs. Let's see how to compare libraries and the kernel LBIs following uh, similar steps, configure, uh, sorry, uh, generating, extracting the representation of the ABI, building the internal representation, and after that we use the external command to enumerate the difference of the, of the ABIs. Mm -hmm. Let's see some prerequisites for the kernel. The kernel should be a special support to uh, put the CTF information inside of the binary. <laughs> How we can, uh, after that we, uh, I will mention some metrics, uh, performance metrics down just to extract the information of the CTF and using the CTF reader compared with the dwarf reader how to detect an ABI breakage I using the new support. And I provide an, an example to build an, a kernel within one as a specific version of an ABI, but this module should be tried to be load in another different version of the kernel. Uh, after that, uh, let's see how CTF can help us to um, check the compatibility across the different versions of the kernel or libraries. <coughs> and the, in the point six, we will see an using user cache that are some uh, every age, some GCC attributes that update the every age, but the LIFABIGALI are unable to detect those, those changes. And the final point, I will show you the working pro progress that we have. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, the ABI define a set of rules and conventions to specify how two binaries should be changed the information across them. <coughs> this, uh, this is a level of specification because it is related with the switch set architectures, the <coughs> registers, and is dependent for the target architecture and the uh, family of processors. One of the most important things that it's defined in uh, uh, in an ABI is the calling convention. <clears throat> it also defines as well the size, the layout, and the alignment of the basic types. Mm -hmm. In an ABI, we have specified the binary format of the object files. It also dictates the mangling and exception propagation in this specification, in an ABI specification. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is LIFABIGAI? LIFABIGAI is a library specialized to analyze ABIs. Actually, uh, sorry, uh, uh, before to start implementation with the CTFs, just, is, just was able to understand the dwarf information. Mm -hmm. It has mm, tools specialized to extract an ABI 
and, and serialize this information in, XM, in, in, X, in XML files. And vice versa, we can read an XML files and build the internal representation, which in turn can be used to compare ABIs with an specific library, sorry, with an specific application that is ABI diff. Mm -hmm. It also has support to understand the RPMs and Debian packages, but internally it's just, uh, a it implements a functionality just to uncompress those files, read, extract the information, and compare it between two different uh, packages. <coughs> uh, it's useful to detect ABI breakage. And in this way, uh, keeps the backward compatibility or in the uh, warranty, in, in some way, uh, the backward compatibility across the different versions of the packages. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. right. uh -huh. Um, um, the support, now it supports CTF, but what is CTF? CTF is a recent debug format. It associates symbols with its types, basically. It was thinking to be a lightweight uh, debug format, and uh, it's embedded on the ELF. The strip uh, application, by default, keeps the CTF section that is the section that contains the debug information. In the CTF, we have two major entities that are the archive and, and dictionary. Basically, an archive contains one or more dictionary. Uh, CTF in the dictionary, uh, in the dictionary, we have a relationship that is um, parent and child. A parent dictionary contains the common uh, type definition for child dictionary in order to avoid duplicating information in the dictionaries. Mm -hmm. The Leaf relies to access and extract the CTF information in the Leaf CTF, which is part of the bin utils. The current uh, specification is the version three. Here is an example of how we can use the tools provided for bin utils to dump the CTF information, in that case for the VM Linux. The most important thing is the, line, is the last line that represents a symbol type definition. In the CTF, it is encoded by the CTF, sorry, by the C, yeah, for the CTF ID, the kind, in this case, five, that represent that it, print case a function, and then symbol type definition that is the signature and the return type in this case. Mm -hmm. This picture shows how uh, CTF support was implemented in Leaf Abigail. <laughs> the, uh, yellow, the yellow uh, figures represent common functionality that shares between two, two readers. Basically implements a new reader that is the CTF reader, but the algorithm that we are follow is open a dictionary, sorry, open an archive, get the uh, the dictionary and iterate over the symbol table. The symbol table just for library, but in the kernel, in the special kernel, <coughs> just extract the symbol information for the kernel symbol table. That is the exported symbols. After that, uh, Type, type base, the type base was created. Type base can be a function, enumerations, a structure. It can be integrated or can be added to the corpus, which in turn can build a, a, a corpus group. This is the case of the kernel because every corpus represents a module, a kernel, kernel, kernel module, and the VM Linux as well. After that, we can serialize that information in the writer to save that information and, and later be used for a different application that is ABI diff and generate the report of the difference of, of the ABIs that it shows in the figure, in the left figure. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. uh, the tools are all as, as well benefit for the CTF support. This is the IB data writer that represents an, an ABI as XML input. The ABI diff that is used to compare to binary representation, to ABI representation, sorry. And the ABI package diff that it iterates or, or, or handle package instead of binary applications. And the last point is the KIM diff. These tools uh, can is able to extract the information, but do, two different kernel build directories. Uh, this is the basic flow that we follow to uh, compare binary application. We need as input uh, binary files that has dwarf information, CTF information, or just the symbol table information. These tools, the ABI data writer extract the ABI and can uh, build an internal representation that could be used for the ABI diff, or we can save this representation as XML files. After that, we can use ABI diff to compare those binary representation and emit the different report. Uh -huh. And this is an example of the first source code when we have uh, some data types, definitions, uh -huh. we compile with minus GCTF to generate the CTF sections. And uh, what it mentioned here that both binary, both uh, the book formats can live in the same, in the same uh, binary. Uh -huh. This is an example with the uh, with the, the XABI representation, sorry, but now with the CTF support. I don't give mm, full details about this. <coughs> Just I want to mention that in the, in the test in the test suite, there are a common common L, L files, common L, common binary files that shares the same the share that shares the both 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 um, the book formats and <clears throat> the report is very similar it's quite similar this is the second program as you can see uh, i remove the size of the array i remove the qualifier we ask the remove the function to and, and it will show in the report to get the ABI report with the changes, we use the ABI data writer to generate the ABI representation. And after that, we use the ABI diff with taking as input those ABI representation. But with ABI, we can generate an ABI representation. Sorry, we can it, it can receive an ABI representation in XML file. Or, or with, uh, along with the, the binary files, but we need to specify the CTF modifier. As well, you can receive two binary files that are, the, are the, in this case, the both share objects. <laughs> we can replace the the foul tools used to to compare that the, to compare and extract the CTF, the emit the reports of the changes, and we can provide like Google people does this, the an application that implements a proprietary or a different algorithm that is used for ABI diff. <coughs> and of course, it will emit and customize output report for the difference between two ABI representations. Uh, Guillermo, one question. Mm. I think that Doji was actually okay with not having to specify minus minus CTF to use CTF if DORF is not present, right, in mm -hmm. the object files. Yeah. So yeah. DORF will get preference? Yeah. Uh, this, this, I send a proposal, but it will be discussed after the new release 2.1. Mm -hmm. So in that case, when DORF is not found in the binary, 
it immediately will be jumped to looks if CTF is present of the, of the, of in, in the binary file. This is the, a simple layout of the reports, the upper report, listing the VA changes. As you can see, there are the function that were removed. The F3 was changes in the in argument in return type. And there is listing all the changes. It's very similar to the, the report that Worf does. But it's not just limited to compare uh, libraries. We can compare kernel ABIs. And this is the workflow that we need to use. <coughs> we need some prerequisites, that is the CTF uh, supporting the kernel. It's not uh, in the main, it's not it's the upstream yet, <laughs> but we need to, uh, we have to configure the kernel to be able to get the CTF support, and we need to execute the CTF. After that, <coughs> it creates the VM Linux CTF A. This is the archive, um, the archive file for the VM Linux, and it contains all the symbol types for VM Linux binary for the VM Linux image, and all, all the symbols for the drivers that are in the kernel build directory. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Oy, sorry. And we usually follow the that we use to compare uh, libraries. That is, uh, pass that information, uh, the different tools, and it emits the report. Or we can use the KMI diff tools that summarize all the block gray, gray, gray box. <coughs> it just understand or receive two parameters that are the, the both kernel build directories. Uh -huh. This is the command lines. It's very similar to when we compare libraries and when we compare kernels. And as far as I said, we can change the default differ program, but a custom program. Uh -huh. The performance, <coughs> just to extract the information Using the CTF reader compare one dwarf, we can <coughs> see that it's a good, good, good improvement because we are taking one minute and 70 seconds to extract all the ABI in an XML file, and with dwarf we are taking four, 47 minutes, sorry, four minutes, 47 seconds. It generates uh, to generate the CTF representation, we need the VM Linux CTF A that occupies in size almost the same, the same size as the VM Linux. But I said before, it contains not just the information for the symbols in the VM Linux image, it also contains the CTF description types for all the modules in the kernel build directory. Mm -hmm. And the performance is also be represented in when we uh, extract the information, the CTF description, sorry, the ABI description for all other packages. <laughs> in that case, in the, fir in the first and last uh, row, I use ABI diff that just extract the information and save that information in an XML file. In the other three tools, we can see uh, the improvement as well, but we are u I used the the CTF reader to extract the information, but the uh, algorithm predefined in the ABA data writer that is L LCS. Uh -huh. So the Google people change the way to compare its ABI because the extraction in the, in the comparison process is, is slow. So <clears throat> would be nice to have <clears throat> like an ABI, ABI data writer that we could provide as plugin or any way to change the whole algorithm to reuse the work that was done for ABI data, ABI data writer to build, extract, and, and build a representation of the XML, of the ABI. And as well, in this, and as well, we can customize the output for the ABI changes because. Uh, 
as, as now it just have the text, a text file listing the difference. So it would be nice to have the change. Okay, uh, in the kernel, mm -hmm. we can detect uh, kernel ABI breakage. <coughs> and in this example, I, uh, provides, uh, provides a functionality for a service in the kernel version one. This is the source code. And the next one, I built a model by using the, 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 the service provided by the kernel in the version one. As I already know, um, all the undefined symbols will be resolved when the module will be inserted. And yeah. Uh -huh. In my example, I simulate that we change the definition of the, the symbol, the, the, the service, sorry, that it's that I just add the read-only attribute for the end reference. Okay? <clears throat> so I want to validate that those uh, that the module is compatible with the kernel version one and the kernel version two. Oh, ooh. Yeah, at uh, the first, I list the, the uh, assembly code to see if there is any difference between two uh, versions of the symbols. In that case, are the same. We use the CTF with the AB data writer to compare if there are uh, difference in the ABI for version one and version two of the routine that we provide in the kernel. In that case, is zero or return zero means no difference. We use POG in order to compare uh, section by section if it is able to find any difference in in the two in, in the two version of the service, and it don't detect anything. Mm -hmm. So that means that the, the that I can install the first module built with the version one in the version two of the kernel, and as we expecting, the version one was installed successful, but in the version two. In the ring buffer it shows a disagree about the version of of the undefined symbol, but it's not right because all the tests uh, prove that those symbols, the both symbols are compatible. So the insert when we insert the mo the module, we should uh, success. But why the module is not installed? Because there are a tool that is JNK sim that computes the CRC based on the token of the symbol definition. And this CRC, in the version two, we add the attribute read only. This attribute changes the CRC, and the kernel is expecting to find the CRC when we install the module. Which is not right. <coughs> We can install the module by forcing the mode symbols, but we don't have any reference of we are if this module is really compatible. Why? Because there is no way to uh, extract the information online. And in, in online, I mean that uh, we can. It would be nice to have a command that give that gives us the, the definition of the type symbol. In, that, in this uh, case, we are really um, sure that the those symbols are the same. Those symbol type definition are, are the same. Uh -huh. But with CTF, we can warranty that there is no change in the symbol definition. Actually, <coughs> there are the same, the same symbol type definition. How can we do that? Well, we can compile our module with minus GCTF. This creates the symbol type definition for the module. And we can tell the uh, int mode, these tools, int mode and mode proof to uh, match if that symbol is the same for the version one or version two in the case. If the version, if 
the match is, if there is a match, then we can safely use mode version. This is a verification all done in user space. And in this way, we guarantee that the kernel receive a modules in, in held state. Mm -hmm. Okay, alternative we can use, we can uh, uh, prove the CRC in the kernel, but I, in, the, in this case, we need to change the kernel implementation for module.c, that is the source code that verifies the CRC. It requires changes inside of the kernel. Uh -huh. Okay, there is another. What, Jose? The one with Liv Abigail only in user space, or the one with Liv Abigail and also in kernel space? Ah, because the Liv Abigail is C++, and, <coughs> and the module, the, 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 just we need to understand, you need to save in some way the symbol type definition for undefined symbols. So we need to provide in the kernel side the ability to read this information and compare with the, with the module. Yeah, it's okay. 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 This is another use case. <coughs> uh, when we have uh, on the on kernel, uh, sorry, um, ABI breakage, but they're not detected by the current library, but the tools that we have in Leaf Abigail. So this is emulate a f uh, library that implements a service. Uh -huh. And explicitly, I changed the ABI because by default, it is system five. I changed to ABI, sorry, to a Microsoft ABI. Uh -huh. I compile, compile the code but in that case, I will use the I will use the version one to do the link, and the program runs success. But when I do the link with the version two, a segmentation falls because it's clear that the ABI was changed. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. Okay. This is a GDB session that shows how the arguments are passed to both uh, functions and segmentation file occur because an invalid access of this address is done. Mm -hmm. Both is able to detect the, the ABI, sorry, is able to detect that there, is, there are changes but this not detect that it's an ABA changes in, in, in that section. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, uh, sorry. Uh -huh. and it would be nice to have that information stored in some place because <coughs> uh, with that, well, that information we can uh, teach to leave Abigail how to extract that information, for instance, a section where, where of what attributes are changing the ABI. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this is the status work of the patches that I sent to leave Abigail. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I uh, uh, I'm writing a patch to to extract the symbol type definitions just by using the kernel symbol, uh, the pro case sim all file, because we have that information of global, of exported symbols in CTF, dictionary CTF ICAR is installed in the lib directory like when we do make module install. <coughs> Sorry, make header, header, in, header, header install instead of have as input the VM Linux and all the binary files, because it's a prerequisite for 
the two readers have the VM Linux and all the symbol types for the kernel object that were, was built in the kernel build directory. So with this approach, we don't need the VM Linux uh, symbol table because we can find in the proc case symbols and we have the information of the type definition and VM Linux CTFA. <coughs> With this approach, we can use a command like to uname to onfly knows the symbol type definition for a specific symbol version. And in this way, compare with a simple object DOM to the symbol on the file symbol in the kernel object. <coughs> mm -hmm. The uh, other patch that are you talking about, Jose, was the fallback that is. <coughs> and. Mm, yeah, and the last patch is an improvement that can we uh, we can do when we are looking internally in the dictionaries of the CTF, because at least is used recursively looks for all the symbol type definition that depends of any specific type, but is can be stored in a cache in the one minute we can in the kernel we can uh, execute in less time. I don't know if you have a question. <laughs> That's it. So my impression is that the reason you're getting the speed up using CTF over Dwarf is because you've done a lot of work uh, eliminating duplicates in building the CTF archive. Um, and why don't you do that work on on the dwarf instead? Uh, the question was, when can I use dwarf, sorry, CTF reader instead of dwarf? That the CTF archive, mm -hmm. you've gone through the, the object files and, and removed all the duplicates in, in informing your, your CTF archive. And we could do the same, the same process on the dwarf information to get deduplicated dwarf. And you should get the, you ought to be able to get the same speed up on the dwarf reader uh, by doing that same work ahead of time that you're doing on the CTF. Mm, yes. Yeah. hemos preguntado eso. Ah. <laughs> no, I didn't ask them, but um, it's not just the duplication because dwarf save a lot of information of the L5, not just the simple type definition. And the, if, if we can look the the implementation of dwarf. The comparison that A does requires, uh, needs too many fields. For instance, the location of the file that is not stored in CTF, <laughs> the, the attributes on, of C++ that is, the, if it has a base class or base type definition. So it is the, 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 the work that, the difference we can, between uh, the CTF generation does Compare with with CTF generation does have comparing with dwarf. So there is a lot of overhead in dwarf that is not really needed for the API. It would be interesting to see if we could use options to reduce the amount of dwarf to the minimum necessary and then compare again. Mm -hmm. 
I was looking at the slide that uh, you talked about the improvements, and most of them were like on the order of like 30, 40 percent, but then the kernel had like a like a 300 percent improvement. Did you kind of take a look and see why there's such a big difference in improvement for the kernel versus the other packages? Uh, again, please. So uh, slide, uh, I think it's 21. Uh, Uh huh. No, uh, actually, sorry. Um, maybe it's slide 22. This one. Oh. The improvements. Yeah. You know, you see typically like 30%, 45% in that last column, and the kernel is 300%. So why is the kernel such an outlier in terms of the improvement versus the other ones? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the improvement was done because in Dwarf, we don't store uh, we don't store enough information. CTF has the ability to look uh, a special format to store the symbol type definition in looks for this uh, just given the name, so it doesn't have to iterate and looks uh, sequentially Dwarf information. It uses hash match internally and other stuff that uh, are focusing just in looks. Given a name, return the type recursively, of course. But wouldn't that same thing be applicable to like the core utils and fine utils and, and the other things there? So, so the, the question is why is the, the kernel one so much bigger improvement than the other ones? Ah, uh, okay. Maybe it's the duplication. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very small. The other ones are very small. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Maybe so, so you try the <laughs> uh, yeah, I test with glibc. Okay. And the glibc, as far as I remember, was 20, 30 percent. Okay. Much of time. Yeah. So, so maybe the, the, the issue is the size of the the, the, the binary. The binary that's being an, analyzed. So maybe looking at some other large binary uh, would also. Give another another check for that. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. um, so, if they start accepting Rust into the kernel, will CTF be able to express enough information to be used here? Because sure. CTF is specifically designed for C, right? It's, yeah. It matches the C language. Mm -hmm. If we start using Rust in the kernel, what are you going to do? Uh, file. Give up. <laughs> Anything else? For what? Which one? For Core utils. Core utils. Correct. Yeah. Which one? Um, core utils, the second. The uh huh. The, the percentage at the end yeah. doesn't look to be a difference between 1.1 1 .1 ah, and okay. 1.187. Oh. A 45 percent improvement. 45, yeah. Is that right? Yes, yes, but I don't know if the the, the times are correct, but I don't know if it's, I compute well the 45 percent. But the time, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure of the times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I think that there is no more question. Okay. Uh, really, there is no other question? You have still time. You can ask. First, first talk to end of time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So thank, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Bye.